the housing market boom has officially hit the insanity stage. Fierce bidding wars, all cash offers, homes selling for over $1 million over the asking price are now becoming common events. But the latest increase in home prices is showing the disastrous extent of the housing crisis. Of course, this uncontrolled euphoria isn't happening by accident. It's a direct result of our current monetary policies. Even though home prices keep rising at the fastest pace ever recorded, the Federal Reserve continues to allegedly boost the housing market by purchasing $40 billion of mortgage bonds each month. And while the Fed has finally started to signal it could remove some of its financial support sooner than expected, Several experts have been warning that the U.S. central bank is only expanding the magnitude of the housing bubble while it deliberates. That's because the Fed's emergency measures are artificially suppressing mortgage rates and further inflating prices that are already way too high in many markets. In other words, the Fed just continues to pour more gasoline on that fire. As said, Peter Bookfar, the chief investment officer at Bleakley Advisory Group. However, considering how fast the economy is bouncing back from the health crisis-induced recession, and also how unsustainably high inflation levels are getting, industry specialists are alerting that soon the Fed will have no other choice rather than start tapping the brakes, at least on its bond-buying program. Last week, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell admitted during his weekly press conference that the jobs market is likely to be very strong in the near future, and there is a growing risk that inflation isn't going to be temporary, as many Fed officials, including himself, have previously stated. At this point, the latest housing market data is already completely off the charts. The median sale price for a home reached a record $341,600 in April. Now that is the highest since the National Association of Realtors began tracking the data back in 1999. On top of that, single-family home prices skyrocketed by 20% from last year, the biggest increase since the group began tracking prices in the early 1970s. According to last week's reading of the S&P CoreLogic Case-Shiller Index of Property Values, nationwide, home prices jumped 14.9% from a year earlier, the biggest gain in data going back to 1988. In all 20 cities that make up the index, significant year-over-year -year price gains were recorded. In five of these cities, Charlotte, Cleveland, Dallas, Denver, and Seattle, it was registered the largest 12-month price increases on records dating back 30 years. Although the housing price bubble is at dangerously high levels right now, policymakers probably won't act fast enough to avert the looming housing crash. For Jason Furman, a top economic advisor, it's clear that everything in the housing sector is going up in price. House prices are exploding right now, and it probably isn't the case that the Fed should be continuing to artificially hold mortgage rates down, he said in an interview with CNN. For example, in California, 52 of Orange County's 83 zip codes have seen median selling prices jump by six figures during the past 12 months. According to a recent study, the number of Orange County zip codes with median prices of $1 million and more increased by 10 to 25 since May 2020. On the lower end of the pricing spectrum, the pace of appreciation has been so alarming that prices went up by $66,667, making the median price of a simple single-family home jump to $666,667 in May. 
This crazy feeding frenzy has essentially alerted the price landscape all across the nation, and what is going on in Orange County is just a reflection of what artificially suppressed mortgage rates can do. In May, median house prices in Orange County hit $895,000, up 19.3% in a year. You heard that right. That was a $144,800 gain, a price gain in just 12 months. And 62% of zip codes registered price gains above $100,000. Californians have been deeply concerned about the fast pace of home price appreciation. A different study exposed that housing crash concerns expressed through online search trends jumped in recent weeks. An analysis of data from Google Trends compared and combined peaks and valleys of search patterns for two phrases related to real estate troubles, housing bubble and housing crash and two phrases of simple interest in property, home prices and housing market, back to 2004. If we consider that online searches can be linked to popular thinking, Californians seem particularly fearful that another bubble-bursting crash may be fast approaching. The study found that last month alone, Californians searched for these four key housing terms at a collective pace 69% above the 17-year average. For the phrase, housing crash alone, the index recently hit its recent peak at 123%. In essence, consumers can tell when market imbalances are becoming way too extreme. What was a notable home ownership rebound has quickly evolved into an unnerving, and unhealthy housing market, and buyers are aware of that. Another telling sign of just how crazy things are on the market right now is that one completely trashed house was listed for $600,000, and it received multiple all-cash offers. Meanwhile, in Manhattan, real estate prices reached an all-time high $999,000. According to a recent report from Douglas Elliman and Miller Samuel, average sale prices climbed 12% this quarter, dropping $1.9 million. It's a sign of the frenzy and intensity of the market, outlined Jonathan Miller, CEO of Miller Samuel. It's rebounding much faster than most participants expected, he said. According to Daniel DiMartino Booth, a former Fed official, the latest price gains make it obvious that the Fed needs to start removing stimulus on the mortgage front. Ultra-low mortgage rates have helped feed a frenzy in housing, stressed Booth, who's now CEO and chief strategist at Quill Intelligence. She explained that the central bank's support for an already booming housing market is pushing millions of first-time home buyers out of the market and that's a very negative consequence for the overall economy, because owning a home is the main way many Americans start to build wealth. So, how are millennials supposed to ever purchase a home in this wildly competitive market? In real terms, how many of them are likely to have enough money saved to make all cash offers? At the end of the day, as the chief global strategist at J.P. Morgan Funds, David Kelly, recently highlighted, the Fed's support is making inequality worse because you end up subsidizing the rich at the expense of the poor. Home prices have been so out of touch with reality that the only alternative left for most Americans is to rent. But on the other side of the economic rebound, the cost of rent is squeezing people still struggling to pay their bills. Several advocates are fearing a major uptick in homelessness as federal and state eviction moratoriums expire. Already, many renters who've fallen behind in their rent payments have started to be pushed out in the streets. That's the case of Jay Riffenberry, 47, who doesn't know where he will move next. In a recent interview, Riffenberry revealed that he simply cannot afford to pay to have a roof over his head anymore. It's like your whole world collapses. 
You think you know what's going on. You think you found a safe place. There's nothing. It's all expensive. It's outrageous, he said. And while it's not clear how long home prices will soar before buyers shy away, or how many people will be displaced because they can't afford rent, we can explicitly see that the current housing boom has divided those who can afford to stay housed and those who can't. Just three days after data showed home prices jumped the most in 30 years, former Treasury Secretary Lawrence Summers told Bloomberg that the surge in U.S. house prices is scary and questioned the wisdom of the Federal Reserve continuing to purchase mortgage-backed securities as part of its stimulus measures. Summers said such gains are inflationary and would likely drive other prices higher. He said, this is scary. Rising house prices in most people's common sense of the world represent inflation. He predicted that the housing price bubble will continue to grow given a shortage of supply, but said the inflation risk needs to be taken very, very seriously. I cannot understand why the Federal Reserve in the face of this continues to be every month a major buyer of mortgage-backed securities. That is the ultimate in pro-cyclical behavior. Just like Summers, many who have seen asset price bubbles soaring since the financial crisis of 2008 have learnt the lesson that trees grow to the sky and that some trees are just too tall to be stable. That makes me extremely nervous, he said. In fact, home prices are now so absurd that many prospective buyers are just walking away. In April, existing home sales dropped by roughly 3%. That is the third consecutive month of decline. Considering the scorching hot demand for housing, well, this indicates there aren't enough homes on the market, at least not affordable ones. Double-digit price increases are running too hot to the point that it's slowing things down. As said Bookfall, the Bleakley CIO, simply put, the Fed's policies to allegedly support housing are actually depressing activity in the market, which means they're doing exactly the opposite of what they're supposed to do. Today's house and rent prices are completely unsustainable and completely unacceptable. And the more the bubble grows, the higher are the risks. That's why it's safe to say that the next housing crash will hit even harder than the last. So, you better be prepared. <laughs>